Hello YouTube and welcome to our 104th I believe Uni 3D tutorial and in this tutorial what we're going to do is look at something brand new called classes. Now classes are something which are really simple if you can get your head around it first time if not it might take you a bit of time but it's really 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 simple and what classes basically are is if you look at uh, a good idea would be our inventory GUI is these in here these grids each grid um, is a class so element zero is a class and it stores text image and tooltip we're going to basically be creating we have our own one of these and we'll be able to use it just like any other variable as long as we reference it to this script so we'll be able to create an array of these variables and we could be able to put anything we like inside of them um, it's a quite weird to get your head around because we're learning two new things but once you get it it's really really simple so what I figured we'd do it for would be our entity starts. So if I can find here, these here, we're going to do it for these. So we'll make one for our running speed, for the rotate speed, jump height, the name, stuff like that. It'll be really, really cool. So what we're going to do is go to our, in actually we'll just use our entity stats, it's much simpler. So what we're first going to do is create the class, which is simply done like a function. So we're going to type class don't forget to ignore everything up here for now and then we're going to name our class whatever you like so I'm going to call it entity and then open it like a function simply like that so our class is called entity so every every time we want to reference entity we'd say entity so entity starts dot entity and now that we've done that we need to declare inside it the variables what each class will support so just like our element it will have text, image, and da -da -da, text again, string. So we're going to type var entity. In fact, we'll just call this name, var name, and it'll be a string. Don't set it for anything yet. And then another one will be var entity running speed. So we'll call it running underscore speed. This will be an int. And var rotate speed int again what else do we have jump height and that'll do for now we'll just do four we don't leave these bits here for now just forget about them so we've got these here for characters and below this we're going to create a new function which we've done many many times and we'll just call this the exact same as your class you've got to call it the same don't worry it won't cause errors or glitches or anything because when you reference entity it'll automatically call this function this is like the update function or the start function as soon as the class is called it references this so in here in the brackets we're actually going to declare something now which we've not done before they these are called parameters parameters are when you want to pass data between two functions without calling variables so You'll not get it straight away, but then as soon as I show you, you'll be like, oh yeah, because it's really simple. So, in this function, we're going to type a variable for each one of these. So, for name, we'll just say na, and it'll be a string. So, we're creating variables in here which can be only be used by this variable here. So, na, string, what else do we have? rs, oh, that's not going to be, run, run s, or just say run down for speed, run speed, and you must put a comma during each variable. So rotate for rotate speed and jump for int again for our jump speed. So if we save this and just try it now, you should see we have no errors. But we need to attach entity stats to something. And I've looked around and I actually can't remember where we attached it, so I'm just going to attach it to miss scripts. It seems to work. There. so you'll see nothing changes yet don't worry about it so in here we basically need to assign each of these variables to these so run rotate and yes if you have like thousands you do have to assign each but for now it'll work so we're going to type name equals na so na was for our name so run was our run so we're going to type running speed equals run and then rotate speed and then jump height jump height equals jump and same again with rotate speed rot so 
what this will basically do is when we call the class entity we'll create a new instance of this so we'll do that in a minute just like these here but instead of being in it'll be something else and it'll run through these so you can put say if you call the variable player player dot and then it'll give you these options so player dot name equals player dot running speed and you can set it what you like in script so this function what it does is as soon as this is called it'll assign all these parameters here which you'll see when we create our actual character so let's create one so just above here we'll type var player in fact we'll type um, shall no oh, we don't have him no more um, ah, what do we do? Shopkeeper, that'll do. Shopkeeper. So our shopkeeper um, will be an entity. So def define it like you would. Equals new entity. And then here, we need to fill these here. So the first one is string. So we need to put a string name. So we'll say female tech shop for now comma the next one is rot which is run running speed run running speed so we'll say for the shopkeeper it was four so six and then for the rotate speed again it was three and two so if we were to save that now you'd see in the inspector this variable shopkeeper will be created just like a grids or GUI element but you'll have all these different attributes inside and yes you can change them so wait for it to save 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 tick 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 do 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 there so we now have shopkeeper so if we open it up shopkeeper has name running speed rotate speed jump height so we've created our own variable slash well variable kind of but it's actually named class so don't go to your teacher or something and say I created my own variable type because he'll be like no but yeah so let's create another one just for an example so you can see the difference but with this time we're going to experiment so instead of shopkeeper we'll say farmer because our farmer's cool farmer entity new entity and what this new entity basically does is creates a new type of it so in entity here has no properties whatsoever it's not set to zero one or anything but if we say new entity just like we do on grids and everything it creates a new one of them for us to input our data to if you don't get it just don't worry about it it's not important as long as you keep it in so we'll call it farmer david yeah that'll do it was a choice between david and joe i chose david so farmer will B3, so sit exact same, but we're going to get rid of one of them, and you're going to see it's going to show an error. So if we click it, it'll throw an error saying, Sorry, it doesn't find it. There you go. So type entity, which is our variable name or class name, does not have a visible constructor that matches the argument string int int. So what the constructor is, is this bit here, this function. So the constructor is saying, Well, the error. If we label that, it can't find it. What's well, a string, which is the name, int, which is the run, and int, which is that. If we got rid of this jump here, it's a throw an error for shopkeeper, but farmer would work. So it's saying you need to put a jump height in. So we'll say two for him. And now you'll see it'll work perfect. And we'll have two. There you go. Farmer, any time now, please show. There we go. So we've got farmer. Farmer David, 6, and yes, you can edit it, so we'll call it, yeah, we'll just keep, I don't know, we'll make the jump height, oh, I don't know, Ooh. Um. we'll say you can run slightly faster because he's a farmer, I don't know how that helps or whatsoever, it won't change it in this script though, not even if you reload the script, so still try the best to program it in the script so it's permanent, but you don't have to, so I'm going to change that back to 6. The only reason I'm telling you to put it in the actual script is because when you change levels, if you haven't got it all in script and you've done it only in the inspector, without transferring it over the inspector, it's not going to work. And when I actually figure out how to trans like literally put it in the code, I'll let you know. So we've got these here, but I'm going to show you what types of variables you can have. If you can imagine any variable in Unity, you can stick it in. 
So for example here we'll type um, var do 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 text um, uh, icon yeah map icon that'll do because we'll eventually stick an icon and I want this to be a texture 2D so these will throw an error because we've not assigned it and so will this so in here we'll type comma and we'll put map um, ICO for icon and this will be a texture 2D and in here again we'll reset it so map icon equals ICO and up here we'll now assign what we want so what happens if you can't assign it like how do you assign something with a texture to it if you want to assign it in the inspector well you put the word null and it'll allow you to assign it because null means nothing blank it's empty but it's still there so if we play it now when this refreshes we'll see it update it there see so now if we were to go to our textures uh, there we don't have any textures we can assign on whatsoever I didn't really think that out but we'll give them I don't know she can be an apple yeah that'll work until we get some proper textures it's not gonna work this easy so we'll sign her an apple and him that palm wood yeah that'll work so that works and you can create your own one of these just duplicate this line here and have these here so now that we've done this we can effectively get rid of this but yeah let's just get rid of this and see what happens yeah because I don't know if it's gonna throw an error or not I'm pretty sure we haven't used it loading loading there you go so because we didn't make a move yet it's thrown no errors but if we what happens if we want to assign these so how do we literally say get um, the females running speed so actually accessing um, this class for whatever you need it for is really 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 simple so we're going to put that together and what we're going to type here is create a variable for our character so var player entity equals new entity and what we'll do for this name is we need to get its name from player attributes so we'll type player Let's go at reboots dot and do you remember where it was? Because I don't. It'd be so good if you people could hear me right now. Like, um, I could hear you if that'd help. But yeah. So char player dot char name player attributes dot char name. So that'll set it to whatever that is. So when we create a character, say we call it dragoon, it'll equal dragoon and etc. So we need running speed. So what's our running speed? We'll say. I believe it was 12. We'll have walk speed and everything eventually. Rotate speed can be 6. Jump height can be 4. I don't know. And map icon will set to null again. So that should draw the data out from there. So if we click Miss Scripts, wait for it to tick, and go. Now, there we go. Player. And we have player. So he's named Dragoon. You may need to tweak that to make it update from the script, not the inspector, because Dragoon, it might stay there. But if we play it, you'll see something happens. Our player goes bye-bye, because we have an error. It cannot find the word system jump height. So we click that, and we'll have a look what's wrong. Well, that's why it's wrong. So it's trying to literally get our entity stats, which it can't have. So it's really, really simple how to do this. Right here above the, below this controller we can type var um, uh, stats yeah and this will be entity stats so what we're going to do now is link it together equals get game object dot find misc scripts or whatever you've called yours dot get component entity stats so that'll get it from there, and then on this stats bit here, we're going to replace it with entity stats. In fact, we're going to replace this entire bit. So rotate code. We'll put stats dot. What's the name of it? Player. And da -da -da, da -da -da, we'll type dot. Yep. 
and then we'll get what we need. So we need rotate speed. So dot rotate speed. Copy that and we'll paste it also on rotate code. That's running. Paste it there. Um, instead of ro rotate, we'll put running as soon as we can click it. And as you can see already, it's so much easier. Name of your character, dot rotate speed. We may have to think of a clever way around it for um, AI and stuff, but for our player, it's spot on. We can all see that. So we'll place this with jump height and do, 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 do. there. We can replace it with jump height again. Here, all the way to here. And if we save, and now we try it again, provided we have no errors. I don't think I've missed any. It should drop, they're perfect, drop straight down. So as you can see, our player is super fast at the moment. So we've clearly said something differently. Let's make him faster. Ro running speed 20, please. Oh, you can hardly see difference. Let's try, oh dear. That might work well. Now you can see him walking. So, we can now have a, when did I put a wall there? Oh, yeah, space station. So now you can see our character move. So let's jump. Nothing. Let's try a hundred. Boing. I reckon we could jump straight into the space station. And on a tree. Why not? So as you can see, it's much, much, much easier to have classes for your stats. And what we're going to eventually do over the periods of tutorials is put one for our inventory and our shop. We'll do it for everything what really, what basically was like, kind of like that, but not like that if you get what I mean. But this is just, it's so much, in, 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 I can't remember what word, intuitive, That's I think that's it. But thank you for watching, I hope you liked it. Um, if you've ever used classes before, please explain. I know I used to use it in C Sharp for creating my own type of objects just like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time my friends.